We're about to be live. And okay, we're live. Cormega, what's good, man? What's up, Jordan? What's up, man? So, uh, where are you at in the world right now? I'm in um, California, chilling. I heard you just uh, went to that Jacka event. Yeah, I went to the Jacka tribute concert in um in the Bay Area. Chilled out there for a few days. That's dope. And um, yeah. then I said, you know what? Let's take a drive to Los Angeles. I'm going to do something different. So we drove out here. Oh, nice. You just drove down PCH? Whatever that thing is, we drove down. I don't know what age it was, but we drove it. <laughs> That's a long-ass drive. <laughs> yeah. It was a dark night. I took a nap. I let my homie drive. Then when he got tired, I drove. You know how I'm doing the highway, Jordan. You've been there. Yeah, yeah. Now I remember. I remember when we took that drive down to North Carolina once to check your uh, your six four out. You packed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the ride. We weren't stopping for shit. Yeah. <laughs> you said, "Get yourself a sandwich. We're not stopping." <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But um, so what's been going on? Everybody's asking for new music. You know, I've been getting a lot of requests about that. I know it feels good. It feels good that people actually give a fuck too. Um, that is a good. Thing, I have yeah. new. <laughs> that is very good. Yeah. Um, I have a lot of new music for people. Um, uh, I have new music coming out with Rock Marcy. I have new music with Bumpy Knuckles. I have new music with Stick from Dead Prez. I have uh, Outlaw songs. I have CNN, uh, Mob Deep. Uh, mm. Like I have so much. New, I have more new material than I've ever had at any point in my career. So yeah. anybody that's a core mega fan should definitely be happy about that. I have the songs with Harry Fraud. Um, me and Havoc are doing a project. I have songs uh, produced by Street Runner that are incredible. Mm. Um, I have some new beats right now in my phone that I was writing to. And uh, and I'm also just trying to, um, I'm thinking about just doing an EP and just throwing it out real quick just to satisfy people. But, you know, the music is coming. Uh, my main priority, I had three goals, three agendas um, in recent times. It was the book. Mm -hmm. My sneakers and then the music. The book, Understanding the True Meaning, is out. It's can, in stores now. Get that well, book? They can get the book. You can go to Barnes and Nobles, and if it's not in there, they'll order it for you. You could go to Amazon.com. You could go to Kindle. You could go to my Instagram, which is I am called Mega, mm -hmm. and you can order it from the link. And uh, we'll have it in more stores soon. You know what we should do? So that's. <laughs> Core Mega and I are working on building a store so you guys can order merchandise and stuff. So we'll probably have a link on there to order the book. That'll be coming. You, you'll announce that on your Instagram, right? Yep, yep. Yeah, so he, he'll have his, uh, he has a new uh, store going up where he's going to sell t shirts. That's just to start. And then he's going to get more creative. Uh, Core Mega is really into health, too. So maybe you'll incorporate some stuff in there, right? Yep, yep. You're you're uh well you're kind of like we'll a, you you you've adopted more of a plant life plant based lifestyle right so yes but I cheated on my diet today today I had a pizza I won't lie hey we all we all slip I mean you know I I I when I'm on my health you've seen me on my healthy shit but then sometimes you just slip a little bit but when I slip I slip you know what I mean <laughs> no doubt I fall off the cliff <laughs> yes do Cormega seen me skinny fat. You see me at many different different levels. <laughs> Facts. See me with the South Pole when I used to wear South Pole and you used to uh, snap on me. And doctors. <laughs> and doctors. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Twix. I was there for all of that. Remember when you made me throw those wax sneakers away into the trash incinerator in front of you? Yes. <laughs> we, wasn't, we wasn't having that. So, okay, so we got Core Mega Music coming. So, uh, Core, you might drop a track next week. Is that possible? I just did a freestyle over a Jay Dilla beat. I'm really thinking about letting that go. Yeah. But also, it came out so nice, I might just create a new beat around it and make a whole song out of it. I'll think about it. But I've definitely got something new for the fans soon, definitely. Maybe do both. Maybe have Jay Dilla on one part and then the remix, you know? Yeah, I could see that. And I got that song, Ironic. We did a song called Ironic uh, a few months ago with my man Giggs from um, England, right? From yeah. London. And uh, I also had a version with Noid on it, a Queensbridge version. So I'm going to let that Noid version go soon. Yeah, you might as well let that go. But... For sure. 
And then um, what's the – what do you think the – what? I know you have the Harry Fraud Project, you have the Havoc Project, then you have the Core Mega EP. What do you think is most likely to come out this this year? Um, it depends because I could I could um try to rush the Havoc thing because I already have most of the beats. Yeah. Um, but the EP I could also that could be the quickest because I have so many songs accumulated that are just sitting around. I could just put them together and throw them out as an EP. Yeah. So. De- definitely, there's definitely gonna be core mega music. Don't gotta worry about it. And plus, I've done a lot of features, so it's like I'll mm-hmm. be on a lot of. Uh, I've done a lot of features for for artists. Um, so I know what, I know what must be done, and I'm on my job. Trust me, I was, I was here writing today. Oh, nice, nice. Is it is it inspiring being out there to write? In California, yes, it, yeah, it is. Especially if you're in a peaceful environment. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's that. So, um, so you got these shoes coming out soon, right? Mm-hmm. Yep, the the Cormega Ewings, yep. And uh, when do those come Very out? September, I believe the release date is September 1st, and we're having an event September 2nd in Lower East Side. Um, if anybody wants those, I think they better jump on them fast, because I have a feeling they're going to go fast. Um a lot of stores bought them and retail ex- excited about them. Mm-hmm. And um, I got a real good feeling about that. So September, we have an event in New York, Lower East Side at Lafayette. And um, just be on point. I got you, Jordan. I got to get your styles and stuff. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we'll get those shoes and we'll debut them on the on the show. You know, and then uh, we, we you also got a jacket and stuff, like a capsule to go with it, right? When does that come out? Um, I don't know the date for the capsule. I know that's that's running behind schedule, but that's coming also. Yep. You know what we should do? Uh, it, it's kind of like when, when most kids went back to school down south. When, when did they go back to school up north? September fifth. September fifth. Hmm. Because you could like get a backpack that might go with it, right? Like that might match that they're gray, right? You know what? That's a great damn idea, man. That's a really good idea, man. I'll send you some, um, I have a wow. couple of backpacks that, that they have these new backpacks for the like millennial kids, right? That you can mm-hmm. plug in your phone with a USB on the side and charge it. Mm-hmm. And you know, all kids got phones now. So I'll send you a, a couple gray would gray. What are the color? What's the color scheme? Hey, we can't blow everything up, man. We can't oh, blow it oh, up. Oh, you didn't even, re- Oh, I thought you released like a picture or not. <laughs> not, not yet. They you got, got people like, yeah, what color is it? What is it? What is it? <laughs> <laughs> now your man, the weird guy, he's going to beat me to the punch. You know that the guy. The poor mega hater research team. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we got him. <laughs> we heard snippets of those songs. Uh, we're ready to wrap this album up. <laughs> Word, real talk, real talk, though. Yo, that was funny. If you missed it, Cormega went live on uh, Instagram Live, what, two weeks ago? A couple of weeks ago. I was in one of my weird feeling good moods. and <laughs> He played, he he played music to... he didn't want out there. And he got a lot of it removed, but it's somewhere out there, right? <laughs> yeah. The research team was you on it. You know what? Have... They was on it. But you know what? I'm going to release that song, that CNN song soon since I had it on there. Why don't you just release and the feedback it next week? With huh? Just release it next week. You know what? I'm going to call my producer about that. The feedback was phenomenal. Yeah. Phenomenal. Now, I heard so it. It sounded I'm good. I heard that. it on the live. It sounded nice. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I like that. So, um, what else? Oh, yeah. Let's talk about this. Um, you know, we lost Prodigy recently. You know, that was sad. You know, uh, we didn't, you know, I, I know you were affected. Me and you talked a lot around, about that. You know, so that that was horrible loss. Um, have you been to Queensbridge since then? Um, let me think about this. Have I been to Queensbridge since then? I don't remember. <laughs> you were in New York so have. long. You had to go through. No, I like, did. I have been there. I have. Uh, yes, I have. I have. I have. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. How was, how is the vibe like? I don't know. Yeah. I was in my own zone mentally. Yeah. So I don't I don't know what the vibe is. I don't care what the vibe is. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's it's really it's a personal thing when you lose somebody like that, anyways. You know, because you think about yeah. It. And, oh, and today was the wasn't the anniversary of uh, Murder Music, right? I saw you post that. Yeah, it was. Yep, today's the anniversary of Murder Music. Yep, and that was when they first. That was the put first small beat right? album I ever appeared on. Yeah, that was your first platinum album that you were on. No, not no, was. bro. I was on, I was on. It was written. Yeah, and, I uh, about that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I. Mm-hmm. I <laughs> no, but you know, I got a few platinum facts. That's what I'll be trying to tell these guys, man, when they want these features, man. Yo, man, try to come at me, man. <laughs> they took my case, such and such, couple of hundred. I'm not such and such, man. Oh, oh, got platinum facts. People say that. Got platinum facts, huh? People say that. Yeah, I be trying to tell these rappers too. I be like, yo, stop, stop selling yourself cheap, man, because these dudes. Is, is making a mockery of you, like they telling their friends. Why do you think all their friends buy verses from you? Because it's so cheap. Not only that, they telling people your business. And when people do that, mm-hmm. I be telling dudes, why? You know, like why are you telling me what you gave this man? That's his business. So they, yeah, they be like, yo, I gave such and such, you know, three hundred or such and such hundred, but I'm, I, and then or five hundred is like, I'm like, I'm not such and such, man. And no disrespect to such and such, you, yeah. you know, I shouldn't even know his business. You shouldn't be telling me that. Yeah. You know, and then I'll be like, look at my numbers and look look at other people's numbers, and then you tell me why it makes sense for you to, you know, what I'm saying, for you to offer me the same thing. It's not. It's a very different realms that we're we're talking about. Absolutely, like you know, and and it's not like uh, you're wasting good bars. They they're worth money, you know, because you could use them on your project to make a lot more money, you know. So like, and you're not going to go in there and do it. Oh yeah. That. So it's like. Yeah, and, and exactly. That's another different. You know, you've been around me, Jordan. You know, I'm a prick when it comes to my rhymes. I'm very yeah. analytic. Like I will, but you, I see rappers be like, "Uh, I'm just gonna give them this." Like they'll throw any. You give them a little bit of money, they're gonna give you a whack verse. I will never give up a whack verse because a whack verse is still a reflection of me. Of so if somebody's saying a whack verse, they're not saying, "Oh, that's just a whack verse he did because they gave him a little bit of money." No, a whack verse is a whack verse, and I plan on going my whole career without being whack. So. When I, when I, there's been times I've done features and regretted doing the feature because the verse I gave was so hard. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, if it ain't so, if it ain't right, I ain't doing it because I could keep, like you said, I could keep that verse for me. You know, that's what, um, remember Prodigy, that was his reason for taking his verse off the, uh, the New York, New York song because he was like, yo, that verse was just, it was too hard, man. I gotta, I had to keep that for something else. I gave him another verse, but it's not that I didn't want to <laughs> remember that interview. I forgot all about that. That was I and mean, that was a good explanation because I understand that if you gave a five, you don't want your most fire ever. If if you needed it for a Nas song, you you want it on the Nas album that's going to go platinum right away, right? <laughs> no doubt. Yeah, so it makes sense. No doubt. Um, damn, what was? Oh yeah, what, have you seen all that crap going on in fucking uh, Virginia? Yeah, and it, I was just telling my friend that today. Um, is going on in Virginia, and they're supposed to be having them um, national-wide ones too, right? Nationwide? Yeah, because, like, down south, like, there's a lot of uh, Confederate pride for some reason. You know, they don't realize they lost the war, right? So uh, they have all these Confederate statues. And when you do think about it, it's <laughs> yeah, they don't realize they lost the war. <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah, they damn sure did. You, you're right. Yeah, so, like... They ain't trying to hear it. Yeah, so it's like... But they want they think it's a South Pride thing, but it's like you guys were trying to divide the the nation, you know? Like you know, so why I was trying to tell my friend I was mm-hmm. trying to tell somebody this today. My so basically you've been around me, Jordan, and you know how I am about race. Like yeah. I'm an advocate of, of people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I have friends of all ethnic backgrounds. Yes. All religions, all you've been there. You've been with me. Yeah, you judge people um, on character, not on on skin color. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So today, so yesterday, I was in the studio with one of my friends. Yeah. And he happens to be of the Caucasian persuasion, and uh, I said uh, something on Instagram. I said like, um, I said, you know, you said something good when when your white friend turns red, you know, and and, and shakes his head in amazement at at the sixteen you just bit, right? Yeah. So. I said it in, the, in all love and, you know, but then some other people was like, why did uh, he have to say it like that? Like, why has to be a white friend? Why can't just be a friend? Yeah. So that pissed me off. Like, when he told me that, that I was so pissed off. I was like, 
why they couldn't just be like, that's dope, that Cormac is your friend. Or, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Why... Why? Why it has to be so so extra when I go out of my way for equality and and for speaking up for people? So what I do, like what all they doing is complaining, but I'm I'm in the fields. Like I'm I'm I go to I I'm, I'm active. I'm community active for yes. all races. Yeah, and everybody knows this. Like, and I told my friend, I said, Yo, I wish they was here right now. I would curse them out. And I said, sometimes it's necessary to, to say what color it is. So, especially me, because people follow me and because I lead by example. So I'm showing people, yeah, I know I'm black and I do, and I have white friends. And I, and I, cause some people won't, won't, some people act like they don't have other friends outside of races or like it's like they're segregated. I'm showing people, yes, I do have white friends and they're cool. I do have Latin friends. I do have Asian friends. I do have friends of all diversity and, and my friends are my friends. So I'm showing that, but it's like, I'll be damned if I do, be damned if I don't. So that's what I was talking about with my friend today, and I, I was so pissed about it because if, if, if people would stop looking for something to, to nitpick or, you know what I'm saying, like to, to judge and, and, and be more active, if people be more active in their communities and be more active with their beliefs, then it'll be a better world. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, you're right. that's that. You're right. And, uh, you know, as as you and I both believe, you know, you should judge people on character and not skin color. And that 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 that's such an old exactly. way of thinking to, uh, you know, and, and it goes and, both ways. You know, like we all got to not be distracted by these groups trying to divide everybody. And I think everybody should just it works a lot better exactly. when everybody works together, you know. And exactly. And that's the point. And that's what I was trying to show my friend. I was like, yeah. in this, I was like, in this moment, it's like kids, California, we in California, they in a whole nother world over here. They eating apricots and sitting on their little porches and chilling out with their lemonade and stuff. Yeah. It's smooth out here. So they don't know what the hell is going on. They not seeing what we see. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hills and fresh air, <laughs> but they're not seeing. Like the ocean looks beautiful. The <laughs> Yeah, it's beautiful out today. Hey, put some tangerine juice. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay, it's all love out here, but you don't know, like, when my plane lands, there's a rally in the city. Like, yeah. I'm trying to figure out how I'm avoid going through the rally. Like, like you know what I'm saying? Like, it's tension on the East. So it's, yeah. a person like me, it's important for people to see that I'm that I, where I stand and that I'm against racism. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, it was uh, cool today that some woman got arrested for removing, uh, I think it was the Robert E. Lee statue or something. So mm -hmm. today, white people, black people, like 200 people got together and all turned themselves in for removing the statue too. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That's dope. That's what I'm talking about. That's yeah. dope. Yeah, so it was like mixed. Okay. Everybody was just standing up. Like, you know, because like my sh most shocking thing is when I first moved here to Atlanta, right, from New York. And I went to uh, I went to Stone Mountain, and I saw the Confederate flag flying. I was looking. I was like, and then I saw you know I saw black people going up and down the mountain too, right? And I, if I was black, I would have been offended that that flag was flying there. You know, I, you know, so I was like, this is wild. That, this is wild. Yeah, right. Sometimes um, sometimes black people have to take initiative and stop being um. We have to stop being um mentally tricked or mentally fixed on certain things like nike you've been in my house jordan you've been around me yeah there's very few people on planet earth who have more nikes than me so for me to stop wearing nike it had to be really oh you stopped wearing nike? a reason i didn't even know that i haven't worn nikes in years wow. exactly because nike was supporting they was showing a lot of support to the um to the police and yeah. during I can't say showing love to the police but not during a climate of um when the police was shooting up during the the Black Lives Matter and all of that yeah. when it was like a big yeah. during during there, one particular week there was a big thing in, in Supreme Court. That whole week the whole world was watching and y'all gonna give a discount sale to the police and corrections officers that week. Wow. That was so disrespectful. Yeah, and I, I'll show you the um, I'll show you the um, the coupon or whatever. I saved it. I, I screenshot it. I remember, it. Seeing, and ever since that, I remember I said, seeing a tweet about that. Someone tweeted about it. Yeah, 
And then you had, and there was a lot of black people like, yo, that's messed up, man. Word up, man. Da, 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 da. So I said, you know what? I'm going to see who's real and who's a, a Twitter activist. Because I first seen people voicing their opinion on Twitter. And sure enough, some of these same people, I see them, you see them months later, they got on nights or a year later. So it's like, I'm really about this. I'm really about everything that I preach. If I say I'm about equality, it's because I am. If I say I'm about um, freedom, it's because I am. If I say I represent hip-hop for the, the culture, you've been around me, Jordan. You've seen me turn down opportunities where I could have made a lot of money because it goes against what I believe. Or you see me, like, say fuck you to, like, re- like uh, what's those people called? A radio, some important people at radio and everything. Yeah. I believe what I believe, and I'm standing by my beliefs. So yeah. I haven't worn Nike in, like, over two years. Did you sell them? I'm about to. The reason I'm about to is because <laughs> their qual- the quality of the material isn't even good. Like, if you if you have them for long, they're going to dig up. You know how they, they'll fall apart or whatever. So I'm getting rid of them. I let them fall apart with somebody else. I don't like <laughs> So <laughs> if, you wear, if you wear them, they might not fall apart. So, right. but I don't wear them, so I don't want I don't want to go through that wear and tear. So I'm getting rid of all my Nikes. I don't wear Nikes. I don't buy my kids Nikes. If my kids have Nikes, it's from somebody else, or it's from them having like they've been in the house or whatever. But so what do you wear I don't now? buy Nike. Someone, someone's curious. What do you wear now? What's your new shoe? There's so many options. Like me, I'm a hip hop. I'm I'm from hip hop. When hip hop first was popping, Nike wasn't even popping. People was wearing Nikes. People was wearing Adidas. No, people was wearing Adidas. People was wearing Pumas. People was wearing Converse. You got New Balance. Yeah. You got Sorconi. You got ASEC. I wear Ewing's a lot. There's yeah. so many options. So mm. I'm not a slave to I'm not a slave to Nike. I'm not a brand. I'm not um, magnetized by a brand that disrespects my people. And at the end of the day, yeah. for them to do that, the customer's yeah. always right. Nike has to has to um I think they chilled out because they don't do that sale no more. They used to do it annually. They they didn't even do it. This. They caught a lot of flat. But yeah. my thing is this. They have to keep it real with themselves. I'm a sneaker historian, and I've been there. Like, I'm old enough to know. First of all, Air Force One is one of the most popular Nike shoes. Air Force Ones was about to be discontinued. They wasn't even making them no more. Wow. They started, the reason, and the nickname is called Uptown. The reason they call them Uptown is because you had to go Uptown, like Harlem. Those people in Harlem was wearing them the most. That was their style. You know how every borough got their own style. Like, Queens was wearing, like, the Shell Toe Adidas, like Run DMC, and, like, Carl Hart and all that. That was Queens, like Jamaica Queens. And Harlem was wearing Uptowns, Air Force Ones. So in order to get um, Air Force Ones, you had to go Uptown. That's why people called those Uptowns. Long story short, they was about to be discontinued. The only reason that Nike kept making them was to accommodate the people Uptown. And after that... It spread. It spread throughout New York. People used to be like, y'all want to get a pair of Uptowns. And it spread from there, spread to hip-hop. And that's why Air Force Ones are still in existence. Nike was about to fold, period. The company was about to fold. They spent all their last money um, into signing Air Jordan, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan was about to sign to, Chicago, to um, uh, um, Adidas. He was about to sign Adidas. For real? Then he... Then he uh, Yes, Michael Jordan originally was going to sign to Adidas, but then he signed to Nike. When he signed to Nike, that was an economic boom for them. And then a lot of the silhouettes in that time had a shape, shape similar to Air Jordans. Air Jordans were very expensive. A lot of people didn't have Jordans when they first came out. Mm. Mostly the hustlers had them and the dealers because they the ones who had the money. But the regular kids, they couldn't afford them. So you would get the dunks or you would get the Delta Force or you would get the you know, the suit that had similar silhouettes to Jordan's because he was that cool. Everybody wanted to be like him. or You know, I want to be like Mike, et cetera. Barkley. If you look at all the, the, um, the signature line, it was all black athletes that kept Nike on, afloat. If it wasn't for them, Nike would have been out of business. So for you to know that and to, and to during the climate of, 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 of people complaining about police brutality, et cetera, et cetera, during the main week, you're going to have a sale for the police? That was a straight... That's disrespect. Disregard. And I never wore Nike since then. That's a good... That's a, oh, that was a good little history lesson for everybody that likes shoes. You know what I mean? That's a, <laughs> no problem. And, um, I'm here for you. Oh, someone wanted me to ask you... Um, he's a big Jacka fan. He asked, you know, uh, you know, what was it like for you losing Jacka? I, I know this is a... Just a little history lesson for you. I would, uh, all you guys, I wouldn't even have known Jack if it wasn't for Cormega. He brought me in to shoot the Barney video. The first, that was Jack's first video, right? 
Yeah. I believe so. Yeah. It, was, it was the one that it was definitely the one that got him, you know, known throughout the country and stuff. Yeah, we we worked. Cormega and I worked on that together. I remember we shot that video for like many days in <laughs> many different places. But uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you for giving me credit too. Finally, get my credit for that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that video was one thing I will say. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, we always, wherever me and Jordan go, we have fun because we silly like that. When we need to be silly, we serious. When we need to be serious. But yeah. working with Jacko. Jacko was like family. Me losing Jacko was like me losing a close cousin. Mm. I definitely, I'm not ashamed to say I cried hard. I cried very hard when I lost Jacko. Like, you know, that's one of those losses that took a while to get over. And uh, it, it felt weird being in the Bay. I didn't even want to be in the Bay the other day. It just felt funny not even be like Jacko not being there. Yeah. It's like, wow. So, um, you know, we had a lot of fun doing that video Um. Working with Jacko was great, man. He's a loving person, man. He's like one of those people, like irreplaceable, man. He's an irreplaceable per person. Oh no, he was. There was something special about him. He always uh, definitely. He always knew how to make you laugh too. I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was funny like that. Someone said, "Yo, talk about the video off the realness with the figures in there." You had a video with what video? That was Hustler. Hustler was in. Uh, shout out to Hustler. Hustler's my brother too. He was in Get Out My Way. See, Huss was, used to be in New York. Yo, I brought all, um, Jacka, Huss, I brought them to Queensbridge before. Oh, wow. Brought them through the hood. And um, Huss came to Fort Greene, everything. We was in Brooklyn. We did get out of my way. Mm -hmm. Video, Huss was in the video. We was doing a little bit of the Bay there. So we got a lot of history. I got a lot of history with the Bay, man. So, yeah, that's what, that's what was it. Hustler took his car and he started, remember they called them scrapers, and they were, like, spinning them out for us in the middle of the street? Yep, yep, yep. I think I want to do a new documentary. A new who well, am I? I, I was talking about it, like, well, you could inspire a lot of kids and all, uh, just how you had to go independent. You had no choice, and you made it work. No doubt. That was really get rich or die trying. That was like survive or die trying. <laughs> like that was some, you know, like you were good monetary mon money wise, but in the long run, you had to go if you wanted to do music for real. You had to go independent. Facts. Yeah, and he made Independence is the best thing ever. You just gotta want it. You just gotta want it. This this is a hard working man's field. This is a blue collar field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people want to be pampered. That's why a lot of artists that was on major labels they come to independent and they fail because they're used to people pampering them and catering to them. This is not pampers, bro. This is like the real world. You got to be a man in this field. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um. Well. That, I don't want to just say man. You got to be because there's women out there that are doing that's their thing that work hard. So you have to be a hard worker. Yeah. You have to be a hard worker. Yeah. Um, and that's what it takes. You got to have hard work. And you got to have the material. And you got to and you got to be a people's person. You can't just be indie because you think, oh, it's it's a, it's a good check. I'm gonna do it because it's good money. You got to be a people. You got to be amongst the people, man. You got to be w willing to get dirty. And you got to understand that you're not gonna have some of the luxuries that other artists have. I'm not talking about physical luxuries. I'm talking about the exposure, you know, oh, such and such is on the radio all the time, or such and such is on this. You might not got those things, but yeah. I'll tell you one thing, you could fit a lot of people's apartments into my house. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, not only that, you have total control over the whole product coming out. Like, you don't have to worry about uh, Susie doing her job with this and that, you know, like, you know you have total control of everything. Yep. And sometimes that's it right. only gets done if you do it, because you you you're the one that's passionate about your music. You know, Susie isn't. But you know what? Hmm? You know, at the end of the day, you need a team too. Because yeah. I went independent, I was successful, but I'm not going to sit and say me like Cormac is some superhero. Right. Like I had a strong team. I always be, I always believed in team. Yeah. Like I had a strong team around me. I was successful because I had somebody like Biz with me grinding. Because I had. Somebody like Mike moves with that street team yeah, because I had that, yeah. that and because I, I had that publicist like Jackie O that's incredible that worked so hard people on majors are like who is she you know I had a strong team around me and I'm not scared to and I never thought I was better than the fans I always look at the fans as my boss I understand that they're my boss and and I work for them and um I've always been one to you know to mingle with the fans and talk with the fans etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And and from that relationship, you understand what they want. Remember, Jordan, remember people used to tease me? You remember, like, 
Yo, innovators are often met with resistance. Remember people used to tease me on the internet and me and you would be looking at stuff. Like people like, Mega got too much time on his hands because I used to talk to the fans online oh, yeah. <laughs> and now everybody's doing that. You yeah. remember that? When we had when we built so, your first website, you had a forum on the back end, and Mega yep. would always be on there with the fans. And I won't say any names, but certain rappers. Remember, I used to be around shooting a lot of different rappers in New York, and they'd always mm -hmm. ask me like, "So, like, Corn Mega, like, how does he have a Hummer? <laughs> how does he? Because the Hummer just came out. How does he have the H two? Yeah, I had it before everybody. Yeah, he is. He was the first person with H two. I think you." You paid uh, a little more over sticker just to have it before everybody, just to make a point, right? Yeah, I gave homeless. Yes, I da I damn sure did. <laughs> and this is when Core Mega pulled up with uh, all of Fort Greene to my apartment in Riverdale, and everybody, <laughs> everybody that lived in the <laughs> apartment was like, what? Tracy Morgan lived above me and everything. They saw all you guys come out, and they were like, "What are these guys doing here?" <laughs> like, calm down, Tracy. We're not here to rob you. You know, it's funny. Flex lived in my building at that time, too. Really? Yeah. I don't think he lives mm, anymore. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that until after I moved out. But, yeah, he had an apartment there. But, uh, yeah, then uh, you, what, you had uh, X5. So all the rappers were wondering how Cormega was like, had, you know, he looked like a major rapper, but he was indie. <laughs> so. That's how, but that's how I knew rappers wasn't hustlers, too. Yeah. That's how I knew. That's how I knew. Because everybody that say they're a hustler, some people you can't. You, a peddler's not a hustler. And for one, and I was in the street for real. I know dudes who don't look like they got money, but they got millions, right? Yeah. So it's not all about people go with perception. There, there was a perception at that time. The perception was independence and for people who, who failed or who can't make it on the majors. Remember that? Dumbness? Yeah. So, and then it's like people... People were scared to take risks on themselves. I wasn't scared to take risks on myself. So when people was asking those dumb questions, it's like, what? What are y'all dumb? What are y'all blind? Like, I sold a hundred thousand records, B. Yeah. Do the math. Like, I'm not getting a uh, forty cents off a record, like y'all, or or whatever the label's giving y'all. Yeah. I'm getting a nice chunk. I sold a hundred thousand records, mm -hmm. you know, and that that doesn't include side projects. So you do the math, and then it, and then it's like, yo, you've been around me, Jordan. I'm modest. Like, think about it. I don't buy 20, like, however my cars come, that's how I come. I'm not, oh, I'm about to go get some 45-inch rims and some, <laughs> you know, some sh shuttle rocket speakers and all that stupid stuff. I take whatever my car is, that's how I am. Yeah. You know how I am. Um, I don't go crazy with jewelry. I, I got nice jewelry, but I don't go super crazy with it. Like, dudes, like, oh, I spent 250000 for a chain. I'm never doing that. Right. Or it's like, you know what I'm saying? I don't have, I don't have vices like that. I'm not on drugs. I don't gamble. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm going to have nice things. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I work hard for it. So it's like yeah. they wonder what I'm doing. Don't wonder what I'm doing. Do as I'm doing, and you won't wonder anymore. It's true. And Mega you know what I mean? Fight, Mega had to fight so, literally sometimes for his money. <laughs> but he got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's, the oh, wrong, yeah. it's the wrong person to not pay. Especially, oh, yeah. especially you when you work that hard, you know? That's, yes, the, for that's real. the people have to realize that too. When they get into the music business and say you're signed to Def Jam and Def Jam gives you five hundred thousand dollars, that's like going to the bank and taking a loan out. You're gonna pay that back. <laughs> with interest. That's a fact. With interest. So you are betting on yourself, you just don't know it when you go to a label. They trick you. And then it's like being on a label being on a major label is like like my man Buck Wild said, it's like having a a high school it's like a high school thing. Like you got a four year run. Most artists only last like four years. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you really look at the grand scheme of things, so it's like your your thing is the thing the secret to being an artist as opposed to being a just a rapper, a artist is gonna transcend. How can you last more than four years? Or how can you what makes you different from all these rappers, especially now where there's so many rappers? Yeah. The the challenge is to stand out and be different. What how can you differentiate yourself from everyone else? So that's something I always do. I always differentiate myself. I always go with my feeling, and I always go with what the fans say. I always, always listen to the fans, always. So it's not really no secrets, no no secret mumbo jumbo to me. I listen to the fans. If they say, "Yo, this song that you did is my favorite song," and and it's consistent, like 
a whole bunch of different people saying, this is the song I like of yours, I know I need to make another song like that. And a whole bunch of people saying, yo, I really want you to do a song with this guy, I know I need to make a song with that guy. Or a producer. It's the same thing. You listen to the fans. When you make something that fans don't like, they'll let you know. So you, you do something that they don't like, don't do it again. It's just like a boss. Your fan is your boss. If you got a job, you do something wrong, your boss is going to say, don't do that again. If you do it again, you get fired. Yeah. You're an artist. You do something the fans don't like, they'll, want, they'll let you know, like, we didn't like this. You do it again, they're not buying shit no more. It's the same. That's your boss. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's true. I made the realness. So artists is worried about what I'm doing. But, yo, I'll tell you what I'm doing. I'm making albums that are arguably classics every single time. I made the realness. I made the true meaning. I made the testament. I made Legal Hustle. I made Born and Raised. My last album, I didn't even think was going to do good. It did better than the album before that. It, it's one of my... I didn't think Mega Philosophy was going to pop off like it did or, or be that embraced the way it was by the public. But it was. So it's like, you know, I listen to the fans, man. And I don't try to straight... I'm not trying to make hit records. Like, dudes be trying to make hit records. Like, oh, I'm trying to make a record like What's the Name did. I'm not trying to be like What's the Name. I got to be the best core mega that I could be and not be an imitation of someone else. Yeah. Damn. I think... I think Meek Mill was just locked up. That sucks. They, wow. We'd be breaking news over... Yeah, the fans be breaking news. You know how they do that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> someone says Meek Mill was just locked up, but who knows if it's true or not. But... Um, yeah, that's true, man. And I, I don't know. It, let's see. Copped all physical copies of Mega's music. Mark Caesar said, tell Mega I copped all his physical copies. Tell him I said, thank you very much. And if you ever come to a show, bring them. I'll sign all of them. Oh, definitely. Dude, so what do you do? I, oh, yeah. Someone asked about that. What's your, what's your uh, are, you, are you planning on doing any kind of tours coming up or anything like that? or? I'm working on that right now. Um, yeah. I'm supposed to... Rumor has it that me and Havoc are supposed to go on tour in October. Mm -hmm. I'm waiting to see if that's um, tentative or confirmed. But um, that was supposed to happen. And also, um, um, I'm trying to just really finish finish this album so I, could, so I could go hard next year with the tour. Yeah. No, yeah. So, so if you do an album, you'll just go on a core mega tour. Yep. Okay. And also, I'm also going on a book tour. At this moment, I'm doing a book run. Like, if it, I just did a, a, a book signing event in um, Williamsburg, Brooklyn, and the turnout was incredible. Um, it was incredible. Um, people showed up, and um, everybody got, you know, you get a ticket, and the ticket includes a book, and it's a coffee shop, so you get a coffee with that or yeah, tea I or whatever. Yeah, I saw that, and I had Cormac on the cup. I saw it on your Instagram. That was dope. That looked like... So, but what I... I hooked people up. I had an Oprah moment. So what I did was, um, at the um, the cars. signing. No, I didn't give away no cars <laughs> unless it was gonna be toy cars. So what I did, but you know, but you've known me to do that before. Um, yeah. Um, uh, what I was gonna say. So we get to the uh, the the book signing, right? So there's a long line outside, right? I'm like, wow. So first yeah. of all, I'm I'm impressed and humbled by that. So I'm happy. So I'm like, wow, there's a line outside. So I see the people, and uh, one of my friends is a uh, is a cognac is a cognac guy, right? Oh yeah, okay. So he gives everybody online some cognac just oh, for just for waiting online. Like a yeah, shot that's right. Or a so bottle? yeah, not a whole bottle, oh, just okay. a cup. We ain't had to try to people they acting crazy. So so this is your version um, of Oprah. No, no, that's not my version of Oprah. Um, uh, let's get to that. Oh, okay. Okay, Shout out. Shout out to Sarcasm, man. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we all take Jordan Tower pictures and we step on them. All right. <laughs> now let me stop. Yeah. So listen. So he gives all the, all the guys some, some Canis. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, right? That's just because they're waiting and looking thirsty, some of them, right? So that's that. So we get inside. We set up the things. So we, we break out the books. So you come in, everybody gets their book. Then I give you a postcard that was originally uh, done in 2002 with the, um, with the true meaning, right? And they're all autographed, right? So there's postcards from t 2002. Then I gave every single person. This is my, this is my open moment right here, okay? Okay. Not one hook. 
super moments with the cars. I gave every single person in there a selfie stick, right? That's kind of Oprah. That's an Oprah's moment. So we gave everybody selfie sticks. They had their books, oh, selfie and they got stick. to chill. Yeah, selfie sticks. Oh, those are dope. But yeah, that's that's good. Those are expensive. Those are. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, like for giving out that many, that's that's expensive. You know, ten bucks each. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we had an Oprah moment, man. I'm telling you, man. Nobody got cards, but they got selfie sticks. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's good. And we was chilling. That's crazy. That's dope. So, well, you, you know, know, so you know, I try to keep. Maybe you can give out headphones next time or something. You know what? Maybe. No, we can make that work. I'm not trying right? to outdo myself. I don't want people to start. Oh, let's book Mega for this uh, book signing because we could just flip the gifts he gives us. <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> the next book signing will not be as lit. I don't think so. Maybe. Just come for the book. Or maybe, maybe. But, no. um, you know, I got these uh, headphones. We could probably brand them. These, you know, the ones that go in your ear. Mm -hmm. They're Bluetooth. Maybe you could uh, like give a few away at shows or something. I don't know. What yeah, we do. I got a show in Philly this week. I need that promoter. If anybody on here is from Philly, mm -hmm. is anybody listening on your show from Philly? Dan from Philly, tell them now. Anybody from Philly? A lot of people rewatch the show after it goes live, anyway. So. Okay. So anyway. So I got a show in Philly on Sunday okay. at uh, Silk City. I'll oh, so be you there. You have to come back can... to the East Coast on Sunday. You have no choice. Yeah, I got to be back <laughs> for sure. I got to be back. I got a show. <laughs> so I will be back. Um, I got a show in Philadelphia. I think I'm going to debut my Ewings at the show, one of them, one of the Ewings. Oh, wow. And uh, What size? Yeah. I'm gonna... I don't know. I mean, my size, obviously, I'm wearing them. I'm debuting them on me. My <laughs> size, nine and a half. Are you going to bring some slippers but, to leave the show in? No. No. <laughs> Yo, what's it, where's the show at? Like, where in Philly? It's at Silk City. It's in Philadelphia. It's a place called Silk City. Go on my Instagram and look in the, um, okay. look on my, just look on my page. And I am Cormac is my Instagram. And, uh, yeah, the show's in Philly. And then, uh, I look forward to seeing the people. And then next month, we're going to have another book signing in, in Harlem. I'll let you know about Do you that. know someone named Evil? E? Jordan Ooh, yeah. Tell? Jordan Tell Mega, his man E said, a different cloth is still a must. He'll know what I'm he'll know what I mean. Oh yeah, that's my man E. Definitely. Tell him I said what up. He says what up. Some, that's the homie for real. Someone said, I need a size fifteen in the mewings. Damn. It's a big ass shoe. You need a size 15 in the Ewings? What is it, Shaq? Is that Shaq? <laughs> is that Ewing? <laughs> is that Ewing? <laughs> no. you know what, I'm going to check to see if I got 15. I don't know if we got 15. I know we got 13. We might have 15. I know we got 13 for sure. Is it a limited pressing? It's definitely going to be limited. So Okay. All right, so you guys better... Uh, where, where can they pre-order them? We're going to have the link for the pre-order soon, but a lot of stores bought them, for sure. That I know. The re retail went well. Like, stores seen them, and they really was like, whoa, I want those. So Yeah, they look good. Yeah, nice. I, 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 oh, that's right. I forgot. Jordan seen them. Jordan seen them. Yeah, yeah. No, they look nice. He, he sent them to me a long time ago, six months ago. Yeah, you got a juice. I seen, you got the, a little juice well, I seen the picture. <laughs> I haven't felt the comfort yet. I can't review them yet properly. All right. You you get it, you get the review soon. I gotta shoot a jump shot at him. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> What's good with him and Nori? Him and Nori are cool. Who's asking these questions? This guy's waking from a coma. <laughs> the, you, people, yeah, you know, people don't see everything. You know, it's it's hard to see. Everything. Yeah, I was just on Drink Champs. I was just on Drink Champs. I was on Drink Champs twice. I was there yeah. once, just chilling. And I was there doing an interview. Me and Nori is very good. I got a new song with CNN. Yeah. I'm good with everybody, man. Whoever's not good with me, that's their problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, you are good. He's, I don't, even, he's I, even cool with Nas, guys. So, you know, he's cool with everybody. Yeah, I don't got no beef for anybody, man. Yeah. Yeah, beef's, beef's over, man. Now, let's see. We need an AZ Tragedy Mega Track. Hey, man, you know, you guys have these wish lists, man. You know, <laughs> let's just... As in Vogue said... I'm not going to even say it. Yeah, they got to happen naturally, guys. So these guys are all cool. So if it happens, it happens. 
Mega, do you still come through Greensboro? Ooh, tell that person I said shout out. Shout out to Greensboro. I haven't been to Greensboro in a minute, but I'm, I'm going to come through soon. Okay, Greensboro, is, that's where we picked up the 6-4, right? Um, No. We was in Charlotte. We went to Greensboro. That's where my man Blue was buried at. Did I take oh. you there? And I went to visit his grave? I think we did. I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah we, we went there. We did. We did. We yep. Did. Yep, yep that. that's where my man is buried at. So we went there. Yeah. Shout out to Greensboro, man. Got a lot of love out there. Got a lot of love for um, Greensboro, man. Yeah, you got a lot of history out there. Mm-hmm. Way. <laughs> uh, all right. So, yeah, you got to do another documentary. You got a lot of, a lot of projects you got to get done. So. Yes, for sure. All right. Well, we'll touch base again next week. I'm sure we'll have more topics to talk about. All right. You guys have a great evening. All right, man. Thanks for coming on, Mega. I'm gonna, we're going to sign off. Guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, send in questions for next week. Oh, someone said your book was dope. Keith Kiriri. Keith Kiriri. You there, Mega? Who? Yo. Who? Keith Kiriri said, yeah. I love your book. Tell them I said thank you very much. Oh, yeah, guys. Let's remind them again. You guys got to go get Mega's book. It's available. It's on Amazon, right? Amazon, Kindle. Yeah, just go to Amazon. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, go to Amazon, guys, and get that book. Uh, someone said, what's up with Lakey the Kid? He's, he's chilling, right? He's good, right? God is good. God is good. Everybody's good, guys. All right, Mega. Talk to you later, man. Peace. Peace.